Hi guys, it's Tara from Sojourn here with Megan Just Mancini, also from Sojourn. Uh, we just wanted to take a few minutes to connect with everybody. A little bit of self-disclosure, a little bit of like where are we all at in July of 2020. Uh, so something that Megan and I talk about, consult about, just rap about as friends <laughs> is the impact of COVID on us personally and the parallels we see between us and the people that we're working with. Um, so one of the biggest parallels is just this thing of like how our weight and our physical fitness has been impacted by COVID. Um, so yeah, so some of the things we were talking about is basically as we were all cooped up in this COVID situation, to borrow a term from Jared Robinson, who was on our blog previously, um, we sort of had this like uh, lockdown mentality and this the, the response to that was COVID chaos and how do we manage that and we filled our pantries in ways that they've never been filled before and our liquor cabinets and our toilet paper holders are just stuck to the masses. So the COVID all-inclusive is this strange sort of um, thing that has happened for some of us North Americans uh, because we have had these full pantry, pantry problems. Uh, yeah so I guess when I'm talking about this what's coming up for you Megan or how are you noticing this? I'm definitely noticing it in my pantry and I'm definitely noticing it in my waist size. <laughs> As a result, I think that the chaos and the stress uh, led me to cope by uh, self-medicating, stuffing my face with treats, carbs, all the good stuff. Um, and so now I've, I'm trying to, trying to come back to terms with what worked in the past so that I can shed my COVID-15. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and it's so true when you say carbs, <clears throat> something we know about carbs and depression is that depression actually craves carbohydrates because carbs cools down our hot brain. It's like an easy thing for our brain when our brain's feeling lazy and our trauma responses, we're just overwhelmed. That's a depressing thing to have to endure with. We're in crisis. So then our hormones and our balance is off and our body cap metabolizes quickly either. So there's all these waistline problems and then our pantry is full of carbs. All the temptations. All the temptation. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so, and I think another piece that's come up for me with this is just the realization that I've had poor boundaries between work and real life from working from home. And so I've had a tough time, I, or not, yeah, I've, I've had a tough time not overworking. Um, and, and so through that, a lot of my routine that had, was really helpful for me to be successful emotionally, physically, spiritually in the past has been sacrificed. And so these are all the pieces that now things are coming back to our new normal, if we can call it that, uh, that I'm starting to take a look back and think about what worked in the past so that I don't have to reinvent the wheel. I just have to um, adjust. It seems so easy, but kind of come back to what was working for me in the past and start re-implementing some of those new routines and strategies for myself. So I don't know if that resonates with you too. Yeah. And when we talk about that, it's like, what has worked in the past? That is a real simple truth. Like don't, we don't have to try something brand new. It's like, what are the things that have worked for me for getting on track with exercise, with, um, <clears throat> healthy food choices with intelligence goals with social goals with spiritual goals um, but when we look at those things then we can say of these things that have worked what can I do right now mm -hmm. so I was, I was joking with Megan Megan some um, healthy eating plan that I appreciate and I, I recommend it's called Whole30 this is a whole food balanced way of learning about food and and making good choices and not depriving yourself putting up limits. So in the past I could do that at, like at an A, A plus. Right now I can do it at a solid C minus, but mm -hmm. that's okay. That's just where I'm at. I'm like, I'm, I'm doing what has worked in the past at the level I can do it right now. And that's something because my brain is still stressed. Mm -hmm. I'm not through the trauma of whatever we've gone through. Of it. First of all, <laughs> Everything that it's been. And I like that self-compassion though, because it can be easy, I think as therapists as well, to go for the all or nothing. So I have to hit it a hundred percent. And so it's nice to look at all those important gradations in between to feel successful and come back to even just the scheduling norm that, that things used to be at for us. So. Yeah. And that's so true that self-compassion and then these little self-motivations. So like put your runners on, 
if you can't if you're like i don't know if i can get out the front door we'll put your runners on or figuring out what can work with children at home Mm -hmm. um and like megan was talking about everybody's working at home and our home life work life has totally become chaotic and imbalanced and it's trying to find our way back to some semblance of normal Mm -hmm. uh, because that blur is also very distressing absolutely yeah and two when we look at like cognitive intellectual or spiritual goals it's like what can i manage right now and setting achievable small realistic achievable goals to set for yourself rather than i have to go back a hundred percent to normal whether it's putting your runners on or for myself i have uh someone who keeps me accountable so it's good that we can uh, pull each other along for whether it's going for a run or whether it's barbecuing the chicken that we want to prep for the week. Um, so to have someone on your team throughout it too, so that when your brain is feeling clustered and overwhelmed, that there's somebody there to support you and hold you with where you want to be and where you need to be. Exactly. And, and tr- true to this, think of if you had a previous accountability partner to maybe reach back out to. So yeah. I have an accountability partner. I think we're probably like, I'll be gracious, maybe a solid C minus again right now, but it's something we're doing what we can to try and be meet each other in the mess of all of this. And this feels very lonely because we're in the chaos and the fear of the unknown and we're out of control. Yeah. We're so out of control. So it's, it's really powerful to just call a spade a spade. Let's notice we're out of control. And then let's just like grab onto whatever we can take the small wins exactly celebrate them yeah celebrate. The small wins are big wins yeah and let them add up yeah so take the small ones eventually they start to add up yeah so anything else before we wind things down i think that captures it well yeah so yeah. let's just be very average students of life right now when it comes to wellness strategies and goals and that's okay we can find our way back to the top of the class um in 2021 Right. Dare to be mediocre. <laughs> Dare to be mediocre, right? <laughs> so, Bye. Bye, Megan. Bye, Tara.